Hello and welcome to Adobe Live. Welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Alex Hogue and I'm going to be your host for the next 90 minutes or so. And I am joined by Jem Bayram, a 2D, 3D artist who's going to be working in Photoshop today. Um, and we're going to be creating an artistic 2D illustrated banner for social media. Jem, so glad to have you here. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm great. Thank you. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm doing good. <laughs> Thanks for asking. And, and uh, where are you? Where are you hosting from? Where are you at? So I'm currently in Montreal, uh, Canada, but I was born and raised in the UK. So I have okay. a bit of an accent. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, well, today we're going to be, uh, I guess we're going to be learning about your sketching techniques and line art and utilizing brushes for coloring and shading within Photoshop. Um, and then everyone, uh, let's see, we do have some people here in the chat. I see Sam, Barbara, uh, Steve, Uma Korn, of course. And um, thanks everyone for joining in. I'm excited to get started. And whether you're watching over on Behance or on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and also follow at Adobe Live on Instagram to keep up to date with everything new coming up. Um, well, Let's go ahead and uh, jump right in, not waste any time. Uh, so, Jem, why don't you tell everyone here a little bit about yourself, what you do, and uh, yeah, I guess just your background and... Awesome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Well, just like Alex mentioned, I'm a 2D, 3D artist um, with a passion for video games. I actually graduated last year in game design, which is something that's pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> and I'm based in Canada. But I was born and raised in the UK and my background is Turkish Cypriot. Um, so today we'll be working on illustrated cartoonized art. So specifically banners for your social media. Um, and since I was a kid, I pretty much enjoyed creating doodles and like cartoons, which I was pretty much able to translate into what I do today. So that's why I'll be giving you guys the step by step on creating an illustrated banner. Awesome. And I'm just taking a look at some of your work here. Um, yeah, I, I, I cheated. I looked at some of it the <laughs> other day um, and it is very cool. I definitely encourage everyone to go check it out. I feel like you have this kind of um, like beveled edge, rounded, cartoonish type of feel that brings a really high energy, um, which so far it seems like that's kind of reflected in your personality, which is really cool to <laughs> Thank see. You. So I'm really excited to dive into what we're doing today. Um, and with that, uh, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and let you jump right into it. Awesome. Thank you so much. And of course, if anyone has any questions, you guys are welcome to ask me anything, <laughs> even yeah. how the weather is today. Cause I know it's been pretty bad with the wildfires. So I hope everyone's okay. Yeah. How is that going over there? Um, to be honest, it was a little scary cause yesterday it was all like up in not flames, but the sky was all yellow. And I know that was pretty scary about two weeks ago or so. I believe in New York, it was pretty bad as well. And it kind of drifted this way. But wow. luckily, thankfully, today, the skies are not too bad. Well, luckily, we're we're inside working today and don't have to be out in the smoke. So sorry you have to deal with that. And No, it's not your fault. <laughs> best wishes to everyone that is going through that. I'm, I'm located out in Bend here. And uh, we definitely, Bend, Oregon, that is. And we definitely get our fair share of pretty bad fire season the joke oh, is wow yeah we get we kind of get winter time spring time and then we usually just kind of skip summer and we call it fire season now so oh no <laughs> yeah. hopefully <laughs> yeah, it won't be bad this year it. yeah so <laughs> so i'm just gonna get started and kind yeah. of give you guys a rundown so i know this this takes usually generally i would say about uh, a few days to be specific with me um especially i like to i'm picture perfect I like everything to be precise especially when it comes to line art it's it may be a bad thing it may be a good thing you can take either way um so what I usually jump into right off the bat is going with the canvas size now obviously depending on what you're going to be creating um so for what social media it could be twitter it could be um twitch uh youtube all of the banner sizes change uh, usually what I do is I tend to Google it real quickly um, to see what I'm creating for. But generally, if you want to go for just the generic size, I would do 3000 by 1000 canvas. Um, this fits all canvases. And 
it's easier to scale down rather than scaling up. As you guys most know, Photoshop tends to not have that. But with Illustrator, I mean, it's all great and dandy. But <laughs> with Photoshop, sadly, we don't have that. But that's why I tend to go with a, working with a bank, bigger canvas is always better, I would say. So um, I'm going to kind of go. So I kind of have everything ready. I just want to kind of go through the steps. And if you guys have any questions, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, if you guys have any questions, you guys are welcome to ask around. So I always start off with having the correct canvas size and then brushes. Brushes are very important, especially with line art and sketching. It's going to be your bread and butter, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm currently working on a tablet. So because of this, I have my pen. Um, if you guys are working on Photoshop on the PC or a desktop, um, I would say when doing line art, it's best to use your mouse. And we'll talk a bit more about that later. Yeah, yeah I'd love <laughs> but, to hear yeah. more on that. So to get straight into it, I always uh, import my brushes. So in order to do that, you can just click over here and click the plus button where you can just import from files and then select whatever you want in order to bring that in. Now, luckily, I was able to bring in some uh, free brushes um, through Mark Brunet, I believe that's how you say their name. And I have the two sketch brushes that I'm using from them. And then I have the regular uh, brushes that come through with Adobe Photoshop. So I like to use this textured brush because I feel like it's got a little bit of a nice edge to it. So I'm just going to start by creating a new layer. And if you don't already have a white background, definitely add in a white background. Otherwise, you'll be working on, you know, <laughs> You're not gonna see much. <laughs> <laughs> and And... Um, so with this, generally, I like to get a few of a few things from the uh, like through the Internet, just kind of understanding what I want to create. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it changes. Every person has a different vision for me, uh, seeing as majority of my life is me spending it on the Internet and on my uh, PC setup. I wanted to kind of replicate my own background. Um, of where I'm working through, but also add my little oomph to it. So what I started doing was I start with actually creating the background. So uh, just bring in this brush here currently. And so this is kind oh, of like the step by brush. step. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had it all up. Um, no worries. Actually, uh... I wonder just um, as we're getting into it, do you have the finished project we could um, quickly just see? I do. Just for so, everyone who's just now hopping in now that people are getting settled so we can see what we're working towards. Uh, not this one, sorry. Uh, bear with me. There's so many layers. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah. I don't mean to throw off your, uh, not your at all. workflow here. <laughs> Don't stress it. Um, and I wouldn't even say it needs to be like the final one, just the, okay. yeah, like something like that, you know? So this is kind of what we're aiming to create today or what you're going to be walking us through. Yeah. Awesome. And don't be worried about the layers. I'm going to be honest, it is hectic, <laughs> but. You know, that is the, that's how artists work. You know? Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I don't think I've ever met anyone that has labeled all of their layers. And if you do that, I have so much respect for you. <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I edit in the video world, not necessarily in Photoshop, but it's the same uh, manner in After Effects and all these programs. And, you know, when you're in it and working in it, I, I honestly think it it's going to look like that, you know, probably 80% yeah. of the time. And then at a certain point, it gets too confusing and you need to be like, all right, I got to go back and organize all this so other people can understand what's going on. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, taking um, a look at this, I already see that um, I love the colors in it and I love the, the edges and just just the whole energy of it. Um, very cool. So this is what we're going to be working towards. And uh, yeah, I'll let you I'll let you continue on now. Now that I threw Thank you off. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm so sorry. I just uh, maps you mentioned is a transparent background, not easy to work with. Now, uh, my preference, technically, I wouldn't just because. You can use a transparent background, but you get all of these 
squares. And I don't think you'd want to work with something like that just because you want to see your line art, especially when you're sketching. For example, if I bring up this little uh, background that I just started working with, um, just to have like my two desktops and then the little square at the bottom is more so of like my, my desk. Um, you can see that if you actually just have a white background, there's, there's, there's just so much more to see rather than having a bunch of squares. I feel like it's just easier to work with. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, so what I started with is I always start with a background um, and then I kind of move on to the main thing. Now, the main thing for me is the fact that I am going to have myself within this little frame. Um, so the goal is for me to pretty much draw myself here and I have my uh, my hand. Now, I used to have longer nails. Sadly, I had to cut them because I couldn't use my computer anymore. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to replicate the fact that my personality is through my nails. So I definitely didn't hesitate to add those in there. <laughs> that was kind of my main thing of having the attraction to be this right here. Um, and what I always like to see uh, or, or say is more so if you're going to create something and the main character or the main object is at the front, towards the end, you always want to have the background, um, not translucent, but you want to dim the opacity in a certain way so that it gives you that distance, if that makes sense. Now I'll show you guys what I mean uh, later on. So then what I did was I added the bits and bobs that are basically going to cover everything. And finally, oh, that is definitely not what I was going for. <laughs> you could just delete. I, I do that all the time, so I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> I know, little little things that I'm just like, where did this line come from? And because I have so many layers, I have to sit there clicking the eye icon to see which one it is. Yeah. So this is kind of what I start off with, just a basic sketch to understand where everything is. And then finally, I move on to, to the more detailed sketch. Now I would have to, oh wow, when everything is so jumbled, please bear with me. Okay, there we go. So um, this is kind of what I work with. Afterwards, this sketch roughly, I would say, takes me about mm, two, three hours. Because what I like to do is I like to sleep on it, look back at it the next day, and then I'll see the problem. Sometimes I find myself po uh, posting actually a piece of work that I've already done. And I will look back at, at it the instant I post it and I see something wrong with it. And I'm like, why didn't I see this earlier? <laughs> But obviously to a generic eye, you don't notice that, but the small things we tend to notice. But just know, probably the tiny dot that's misplaced, no one will see that. So don't stress about it. <laughs> Good advice there. Yeah, I love how um, just the entire composition of this, uh, it just kind of really draws your eye in, which I know that's what you're going for, but it, it's working really well for me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I find that sometimes when you have so much clutter, it could be... Uh, it, it could be more of like an eyesore in a sense, like there's too much going on. But yeah. what I tend to do towards the end is I tend to make the background a little darker so that the only thing that stands out is mostly the girl in the reflection of the, uh, of the mirror. So my biggest thing, this is my favorite thing, but also the biggest thing I would say is creating uh, the line art. So when I usually create the line art, after I've done all the sketch, I always want to reduce the opacity to roughly about 35%, I would say, just so that you can actually uh, see the line that's, that you're mm. drawing. Um, I know that a lot of people actually change the color of the sketch as well, um, just changing it to either like a red or a blue so that you can see specifically what you're doing when it comes to the line art. So with this, I hop right over to the line art and I would have something like this. Now I can even reduce the opacity a bit more, especially when you're going to go and move over to some color, you would definitely want to get rid of the, the sketch. So with the line art, um, I have many layers. 
as you can see. Now I have the main, which is the main character that I'm trying to portray here. Okay. And then I have the background. Now, the reason I have so many layers is that when you're actually drawing lines, I can give you as an example. You so, did this in three hours? Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, I would say the sketch and the line art roughly was about three, four hours. And then the rest of it probably well, took a yeah, couple of days. Course, yeah, of course. But even still, that's impressive. I, I, I wish I could draw even remotely. And I definitely oh. can. So. I mean, but I love your, uh, makes perfect. perfect. Uh, I love your your pro tip here on on lowering the opacity so you can still see the lines but also yeah. see what you're doing. And so the reason why I do this, um, and I have a, a bunch of layers, is because let's say I draw out of this. Just drawn over here and we've kind of doodled around here and we we don't want that anymore because it's not within the frame that we're going for and the frame being this area here. So what we all we have to do is pretty much remove it and it wouldn't affect the other layers uh, or lines if this was all one layer let's just say we merge the entire thing oh sorry um So right now, while we're doing that, uh, to everyone in the chat and watching on both YouTube and Behance, uh, if you do have someone you would like to recommend for a live stream, uh, if you look over in the chat area up to the top, uh, at least on the Behance side of things, uh, you're going to see a little tab there. It says guest recommendations. So if you or you know someone uh, who might be good to be a guest on Adobe Live, we would love for you to submit there. That's awesome. We're getting everyone in here. Can, that's really nice. <laughs> that's so inclusive as well. It's such a fun community. It, yeah. And it's fun to do these too. It really is. You get to learn. You get to talk to new people, meet new people. I love it. That's really cool. Yeah. So as you can see here, it's a bit of a pain when you have them all as uh, the same layer. Having to... So I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> Get honestly. Perfect. Yeah. Just so I don't ruin the other lines and I still don't think I'll be able to do it. It's at one percent here. <laughs> and okay, let's go up a little. Uh, my poor lines, I care for them too much. Okay, so I'm getting a bit of thin in here, but honestly, it doesn't seem like it makes a big difference. But I promise you it makes your life easier. And then you would have like a jagged line by the end of it. So mm -hmm. Layers, layers, layers. <laughs> Your best friend. And we'll name them later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so from there, we can just hop over and we can move on to the next best thing, which I know that, you know, coloring may be something that everyone loves. And to be honest, I may be a little biased, but uh, it's not my favorite thing. But it's uh, still fun. <laughs> it's still it fun. Is, which, which part's your favorite? Is it illustrating it or...? I would say yes, uh, illustrating it because the illustration is probably the hardest, but the best thing in terms of you would see the line art is the most important thing because it's basically what's going to carry everything to the end. Right. Coloring is not, uh, if the line art is not as perfected as you'd like it to be and you color it in, there's no going back because you'd have to go have to all the way all. to the start. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's actually a great point kind of in the workflow here. So you want to really make sure to be like locked, so to speak, on on your line art and everything before you move on to this next step, because at that point you go back, whether it's for yourself or for a client, it's going to be really Absolutely. hard to do that. And are you doing this work uh, personally or are you doing it professionally for clients and everything? So this is actually for myself. Um, I'm going to have this on my social media. So you may be able to see up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see it soon up there. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share this with you guys today. And actually, um, when creating something, you always want to consider the small things as well. So in this case, uh, I'm in a team as I'm in a team uh, called Luminosity as a content creator. Yeah. So I wanted I have to include their logo and their Love sponsors it. in there. 
<laughs> so in order to do that, I have their little logo here and I decided to have their sponsors as applications in a sense. Yes. So generally what you see is you would see just words on the screen. And instead of having just words, I wanted to actually implement that into the drawing. So there's other ways. You just have to think outside of the box, I feel, when it comes to things like this. So, yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad you said that because I actually saw that, the LG there. And yeah. I was I was going to ask you, like, do you place Easter eggs throughout your piece? And I'm curious, yeah. <laughs> too, in the chat, uh, anyone else who does this sort of thing or in their work, do you put Easter eggs in there, like these little hidden things that maybe only you would know what they mean or for, you know, I guess in this case for luminosity. But uh, it's kind of cool to see that. I, I enjoy that. I love little things like that. Awesome. I'm we'll guessing have to you add like a little. We'll have well. to, uh, when I can, I I love to. There was there was a joke. I used to work for GoPro for a long time, and okay. in almost every one of my videos, there was like this sound effect of like a bird cawing, and it was always the same one in like all my videos. <laughs> it's just a background sound, but nobody else would know that. So it was just a fun fun little thing. <laughs> Maybe on the next one of these, we'll put like a little Photoshop icon on the desktop there. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll have it right on the side here. It'll be my third one. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So um, then I kind of just hop right into the color. Now I'm going to be honest. I have kind of, uh, I've deleted this part just so I can show you my step-by-step -step of how to create um, the face. And um, I can talk about the rest of it afterwards. So uh, we could just start this off. And ooh, it's going to hey, be. Hey, Omni. Hey, big trams. Selena, good to see everyone in the chat. It's popping in here. <laughs> we love that. Yeah. They love your work. Thank How you could so you not? Much, How could you not? Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> I'd love to check out your work some, uh, sometime, though. That would be awesome. Well, I don't have nails like that, so it's probably <laughs> not very fun. There's always a way of adding them. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, anytime I, I wait too long, my nails get long and uh, I end up, you know, I do a bunch of sports and stuff and they end up getting folded over and oh, it's no. not fun. So I just can't, I can't even have remotely, like they have to be short. <laughs> Understandable. We're, we're getting way there. off topic. <laughs> Nobody's here <laughs> to talk about my nails. So <laughs> let's, let's continue on. <laughs> okay. So um, when coloring, uh, especially using big, uh, areas, I tend to go uh, for the lasso tool. I just feel like it's something that's very simple to kind of use, especially if you have a pen. It's uh, simply, I'd say very simple to just follow a line. Um, and if you have shaky hands, don't stress it. You can, let's say I just dropped it. Don't stress it. Four espressos this morning. I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. You just have to see my hand shaking right now. Ooh. Okay, it kind of is at the moment. <laughs> Just go around. And then all I'd want to do is grab my brush tool. But I can just color this in. I feel that that's a bit too light. So I'm just going to select the color that I have down here and just go over that. And yes, Boz, over in the chat, I would love to see uh, your, your memes and, and pixels and video. So let's make it happen. We're starting something <laughs> here with these uh, little Easter eggs. <laughs> We've made it into a little thing. We've got Easter eggs happening everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. This whole this whole stream, it's about Easter eggs and long nails. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Um, so far, uh, we are here with Jem and she is a 2D, 3D artist. If you're just now tuning in, uh, don't worry because you can rewatch this. It will be archived on both YouTube and Behance. So no worries there. Go back, rewind, play it at your own speed. And, uh, so far she is walking us through her process of her beautiful, um, artwork here. And we're creating a 2D, oh, a 2D illustrated banner for social media. And this is all within Photoshop. And she's kind of shown us all of her little tips and tricks and, <laughs> and workflow secrets. And it looks gorgeous. I, I love all the attention to the color and the shading here. It's really bringing it to life. And I know you mentioned hey. how typically you have that kind of background to be a little bit darker because you're really focusing on where you want the eyes to be drawn to, which 
Absolutely. It was great. I'd say it's uh, definitely the most important step. Otherwise, when there's too much color going on, um, kind of don't know where to draw your eyes to, especially when it's a detailed piece like this. I mean, if it just had a white background, I feel like it would definitely be uh, kind of easier to work with. So I'm just going to create another layer. Now I'm just going to hop right into, say, doing the eyes. I don't know why, but ever since I was a kid, I always like drawing eyes. I don't know where it came from. So okay. any... <laughs> Have you considered working for Disney and Pixar, you know, getting those big googly eyes? Oh, I would love so that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have a... Oh, go ahead. Oh, so good. I was going to say, we do have a question coming in. Um, as oh, yes. an artist, do you prefer drawing on paper or going directly to like digital canvas? So like, did you draw this out and sketch it out beforehand and then you bring it over or what's your process there? So I used to be a traditional artist where uh, I would spend hours. And when I mean hours, I could show you my portfolio quickly. It was a challenge, let's just say. I really hope I have it on here. Um Oh, I may not have actually posted it on here yet. Okay, I have a very detailed piece and it's um kind of looks, let's say like this, where I have the before and after, but this was done digitally. Mm -hmm. um, and it honestly took me a whole entire month. And my I probably put, I would say seven hours a day into it. And the biggest problem with traditional art is the fact that you cannot go back. There's no control D or oh, no. control Z, sorry. There's no control Z. So that that's probably the biggest problem. Um, I mean, well, there's also I no control D either. So can't oh. just duplicate the next layer and, and go. Exactly. There, so. <laughs> exactly. So be J. So yeah, I would always uh, tend to um, put my practices into learning how to sketch um, on an iPad or like uh, on a digital application, uh, mm -hmm. just so that your workflow just seems more seamless in a sense. Um, I feel like it would be it would take a lot of time to draw on a piece of paper and then actually transfer that over. I mean, nowadays technology is crazy, so <laughs> you can just kind of scan it and then it will go right through, but <laughs> it's always uh, good to get yourself used to doing something on a regular basis. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of love in the chat here for your your talent and just sheer skill <laughs> and knowledge that it takes to do all of this, both from Thank just the you. drawing and shading and your attention to detail on colors. Um, did you did you study all of this like in school? Like to uh, learn no, any shading honestly, techniques or this is just Kim's comes natural to you? This is not even natural. It's just more so of, um, I like to pick out details when it comes to, let's say, uh, looking at other people's artwork. So it's more so inspiration. Mm -hmm. When I see something that I'm like, wow, I would love to do that one day or be able to have the abilities or capabilities of creating something as amazing as that. Um, I tend to zoom in and just pick out the small things that they do. Uh, so that I can do it as well. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that I actually kind of, I would say changed my art style is um, coloring in terms of, uh, let's see, let me just bring out a new layer to kind of show the difference. So when using colors uh, and it comes to shading and anything to do with shading or highlights, a lot of people use the one gradient. So they would use anything between the red. So let's say we're going to use, is this red or orange? Are my eyes working? Oh, that's red. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's say we have this red here and you would want to uh, give it a bit of like a darker shade. People always use the same gradient here and they would just use like a darker red and mm -hmm. then give that shading. What I tend to notice is it's always best to actually change the hue. So instead of using that same red, you would just slightly switch over to, let's say, an orange and then use a bit of a darker shade of orange. 
and it would give you a nicer color and more of like that good transition rather than just jump into the same hue of red. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or is that yeah. a bit of a jumble? <laughs> no, it makes sense to me. I also see people using like different blending modes and, and that sort of stuff as well on layers. I don't know if you do that. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I get to that at the end, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But choosing your colors, do you like for this? Um, did you start with a particular palette in mind or you just went with what felt good? I honestly just went with whatever felt good. <laughs> awesome. I did want to keep the. I don't know. Uh, I think you're natural. Tones. I think it's you're humble. Kind. Yeah. I think it's a natural talent coming through. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I, I did want to keep the purple tone seen as my, I have a lot of things on my setup that's purple. Maybe I just like purple. Um, so I, I did want to keep that. Um, but I tend to think that pastel colors all work well together, no matter what the color is. So you can have oranges and pinks and greens all together. Whereas when using darker colors, it, it may be a different story. Very fun. I'm just reducing the opacity of the, the gray here. Um, oh, well, when there's so many layers, you tend to lose where you're working. <laughs> All right, right here. Awesome. Really cool work. Thank you. So, so what is it? What is it you're focused on right now? So right now I'm just doing the eyes. Um, this is actually me. So <laughs> I know that unfortunately I have brown eyes and I didn't get my dream and have green eyes. So I'm just going to be coloring that in. Is there anyone that wanted different color eyes if they possibly could? Ooh, I'm uh, I'm lucky. I, I have eyes that go from green to blue. So sorry, oh, I'm probably the one you don't like. You <laughs> <laughs> they're mostly, I think they're mostly green now. I don't know. Oh, wow. but occasionally um, there when I was a kid, they, it was like really rare. They would actually change colors. They would go to like blue after like a year or two. It's kind of weird. Okay. Is it yeah. depending on like the sun, the way the sun hits it? You no, know, or... I don't think it happens anymore, but it was like when I was a kid to like maybe like zero okay. to 10. Um, it would change back and forth a little bit, which I don't know if that's a thing or I don't know. Maybe cameras just weren't as good back then. So some days I had red eyes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Red eyes? No, 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 no. Just <laughs> terrible cameras, the red eyes. <laughs> Bless you. Terrible dad jokes over here. No, no, they're great. We love dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All Can right. You question sorry do you do you yeah, tend no, to read ahead. the questions over no go ahead yeah no, i'll let have you have the it. spotlight <laughs> have at it no if you see one go for it thank you so uh eric you're asking what is the hardest style of artwork she has ever done realistic cartoon nature or oh, i would definitely say it's nature like i i love environments and seeing like photography seeing things through environments and people that actually are um super talented to be able to create uh, such beautiful sceneries or um whether it's sketching whether it's painting but i would have to say that's always been my struggle i think maybe because my art style is very cutesy and cartoonish that i i'm not able to perform the very realistic and capture those you know those small details that are needed to be able to have such a nice um, background. I'm actually curious um, for that kind of cartoonish, cute style that you have. Has that developed over the years since you've been doing this? Or have you kind of <laughs> always been drawn to that? And did you watch like anime and cartoons yeah, growing up? Yeah, I, I that, still do. I'm curious where it's, where, yeah, <laughs> where did it spawn from? from my background yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think um, I'm very into like the cutesy kind of scene of things. Um, and I still like very, very much like the whole dis like I still watch animated movies, Disney movies, things like that. I love them. Um, so I think I've always had that interest uh, into more cartoon things rather than realistic things. I think realism kind of scares me sometimes as well. 
especially with the whole new uh, technology that's coming out with like the Apple uh, VR. But you can, I don't know if you've seen that. I, I don't think I have, no. It's, it's kind of like you put on a VR headset and you can see objects right in front of you. Oh, Whereas, okay. let's say you want to text someone, you would actually text them as the, like, the keyboard is in front of your face. Quite yes. terrifying. <laughs> Interesting to see that's happening now. I was in a, I used to do VR a long time ago, not so much anymore, um, but I was kind of on the forefront of it at one point. And I remember going to some, some conferences and that was like goals, big goals and things that were happening in the future. Oh, wow. um, and this is probably like five years ago. So it's cool to hear that that's that's here now and happening it's cool and terrifying at the same yeah, time yeah <laughs> it really is i don't know how to feel about it because you think in 20 30 years time you're gonna have holograms and other oh, things it'll probably be sooner than that <laughs> the <way> things <laughs> are going yeah they call it xr a mix of ar and vr interesting okay the augmented reality world is real too yeah very terrifying to be fair. <laughs> I mean, that started in the, the Ikea catalogs and those shopping catalogs where you can scan the QR code and then just put your phone over here and see what it looks like to have your desk in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. I want to see some amazing stuff. And again, and hi to everyone in the chat. Um, both we got people on Adobe Live on Behance and also at Adobe Live on YouTube. Uh, so we got kind of a couple different chats going here, but it's all, we're getting the questions funneled in. Uh, I see M M A B two K <laughs> lots of letters, um, Baz, Eric, that sort of thing. So thanks everyone for, uh, for chatting it up and bringing the questions in and let us know where you're from. Let us know where you're watching from and, uh, what you do for work and how maybe this might influence your work. I hope it does. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, we are having a couple little tech issues, so we are going to cut to standby and take a quick little break. But uh, stick around and we will be right back. Sorry for the inconvenience, but we'll see you soon.
All right, guys, welcome back. Sorry about that. We had to sort out a couple little things on the backside, <laughs> but we're here. We're back. Jem is here, and we're going to dive right back into her project. So Sorry take it away, Jem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Technical difficulties always happen, especially with me, so no stress. Okay, so we were working on the eyes here, um, and we're just getting the small little details that are needed to kind of give it that um, that look. I mean, if you have, let's see, if, it, if there was not this highlight right here, it would be kind of plain. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to darken the top part of the eye. Now, I know that with my eyes, it doesn't seem like there's much going on when it's just plain brown, but that's okay. We can give it something. We can add a little orange and make it look like we have a bit of orange to our eye. So uh, I'm just going to grab the color right here. We're going to go with like a dark brown, I would say. Um, and, and do you have any uh, like favorite hotkeys that you use consistently? Honestly, Control Z is my best friend. <laughs> of course <laughs> it's anyone's best friend um but especially with because i'm using an ipad uh there is no control set it's more so you use your two two fingers to just tap and that kind of just erases it for you which is always the, the fun thing and then the other thing i tend to use when i am on photoshop desktop is control u um this allows you to change the opacity, not the opacity, sorry, the uh, the colors and the tones. I like to adjust and, and play with different color tones just to see what I have. Because sometimes the same color tones may not work for everything. So now that I've just got my uh, my soft brown brush, I'm just gonna take off. Thank you. And for those of you just joining back in, uh, we are here with Jem, who is a 2D, 3D artist. And uh, we started with a, what, a 3000 by 1000 resolution canvas. Um, yeah. And we're designing a banner for social media. And that size is going to depend a lot on what your platform is. So maybe Google that and look it up because it changes all the time. <laughs> but uh, her tip, start with 3000 by 1000. We'll work from there because we can always size down. And then uh, what did we do? We locked in the line art, kind of showed us some tips and tricks there. And then now we're working on coloring and shading. And if you guys have missed any of this so far, um, it will be archived on YouTube and Adobe Behance. So feel free to go back, watch the replays. Um, you, you, if, you if you're joining now, you missed out on talk about fingernails and Easter eggs. So <laughs> it's definitely worth going back on checking it out. Um, that's the best part <laughs> yeah and now we're getting some eyebrows so <laughs> that's always great do you have any pets are you a big fan of pets yes um it's actually quite surprising i've done a couple of these hosting things now and amazingly i have the most vocal cat in the world and i don't know how he's been quiet for all of them so oh no. um no like in a good way i think he just naps but any other time of the day i have quite honestly maybe the loudest orange tabby i call oh, him a micro tiger um, but yeah he loves to be chatty and talkative how about you do you have any any animals so um my mom actually tend she rescues animals back in Cyprus. Uh, there's a lot of strays Whoa. there. So every time I go back, we always have, I don't know, two, three new additions to the family. And at the moment, I believe we probably have around like 16 cats or so. And 16, like, like one six? Yes, like one. You have six. a cat army. That's that's not a couple cats. We do. And that's believe amazing. it or not, they all get along. I don't know how they're all friends but they all get along and we have about three three or four dogs now awesome yeah it's That's so chaotic cool. <laughs> do you know all of their names i honestly don't but my mom does and <laughs> okay. it, it somewhat worries me <laughs> I'm like mom you need to go interact with humans she's like no i'm happy this way i'm like, okay <laughs> i think your next, your, boat. your next personal piece should just be a banner with 16 <laughs> different cats because with the eyes and the colors you have going, I would love to see that. Oh, that would be hilarious. She'd love that. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. Too bad. Yeah, a lot. Of they already, but. 
Yeah, so if you ever need a cat, we have plenty. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, um, I grew up myself on a ranch when I was a kid and we also had a bunch, we probably had 10 to 12 dogs at any given point. And at one point, yeah, pretty similar, Oh wow! Uh, maybe like 10 cats or so and some horses and all that. So would you say you're more of a cat person or a dog person? Oh, I have Oh, to the be big really question. careful how I answer that question. Your cat's listening right now. <laughs> well, I live in Bend, Oregon, and for anyone who's ever been to Bend, um, it's pretty well known that it's actually run by dogs. Uh, oh. This is a very dog-friendly town, and uh, the truth is, if you have a dog, you're just instantly, you know, top, top tier. So uh, <laughs> I have a cat. <laughs> So it tells you where I'm at. Uh, no, what does I, lo that make I you? love, I love both. I love my cat. My cat thinks he's a dog, but, um, uh, to be honest, I want to get a dog. I just don't have a yard for him right now. And I yeah. don't want to get a dog without having a yard. So, and I definitely say it's very hard to manage, uh, dogs as well. Cause you have to take them for a walk and exactly. They're yeah. It's harder very to travel chaotic sometimes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Traveling, I would say is one of the biggest reasons why. I'm not able to get a dog, unfortunately, right now, but I would love one. Yeah, are you like, doing a lot of traveling? Uh, yeah. So especially because my family lives on the other side of the world, I go back and see them every uh, year or so, and I'd go back for a whole month. So I'm like, no, who's going to look after the poor doggo? Yeah, that's a tough one. I always, I always have that issue when I travel as well. I know cats can be by themselves for a while, but... He's a social guy. And oh, you know what? I think I think we have some cat fans in the chat too, because uh the cat banner sounds like a win. So <laughs> I, I love think, that. Yeah, uh, we're all gonna be waiting for your your cat banner with 16 different cats. I will make it happen. Yes. And you guys can name them. <laughs> be sure to go follow her. Uh follow Jen and, and let's let's hold her accountable to that. So <laughs> I'm just and, gonna I'm gonna wake up every day and just be spammed with where is the cat banner? <laughs> Where is the uh, the best place for people to follow you and follow your work and just kind of keep up with what you're doing? Uh, I would definitely say um, through Twitter, Instagram, and most probably um, Twitch. So I stream every day on Twitch except for Fridays and I play video games on there and I actually do my art on there as well. So I pretty much do this, but on my Twitch channel and it's at twitch.tv slash gems. So it's my name just with an S at the end. Awesome. Very cool. So Thank you're, you. uh, you're streaming video games. How did you get into that? Um, honestly, ever since I was a kid, I really liked playing games. I think it's because my brother never allowed me to play on his Xbox <laughs> and PlayStation. Anytime I'd, anytime he left the room or he'd leave the house, I'd secretly go and play on it. And I don't think he ever noticed. Um, but he'd always be complaining that his, uh so his he plays a lot of call of duty so i don't know if you know much call of duty mm -hmm. but there's a kd in that which records how many kills you get and how many deaths you get Did you and he would it? be like why is it getting lower <laughs> oh. and i'm just like maybe you're just bad <laughs> you know? but it was just me wow that <laughs> explains so much <laughs> well thank <laughs> little does he know i hope he's not watching this yeah is uh call of duty kind of your main You're yeah, really I would say there. at the moment, I do play a variety. I used to play a lot of League of Legends. Um, I don't know if you know what that is. It's like a yep. MOBA that mm -hmm. has, yeah, a variety of characters. I think what drew it, uh, me to it the most was the fact that I like a lot of cartoonized things. So all the different characters and abilities that they had was pretty awesome for me. Like, this is what I want. Very cool. There. And now your Twitch platform, you're also doing stuff like, like this on there as well, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Well, everyone, be sure to go check that out. Um, yeah, we'll get some links up for everyone in the chat. Awesome. We already got them up, so <laughs> moderators you. are on top of it. Thanks so much, Sam. Um, okay, so just roughly, just to know from time, do we have about, let's say an hour left or oh, less? Oh no, we're probably, uh, we probably got about a half an hour to wrap things up. Okay. Yeah. So what we'll do then is we can just kind of skip to, I would skip to the little blushy parts and then we can move on from there. So, um, when, when it comes to actually highlighting and uh, doing shadows, I tend to do a lot of 
shadow. So I start with that first. I think that's the best way to go about it. So I would just grab the same skin color as what I have at the moment and just go ahead and look at the different shades that there is. So with this case, I would probably go around here. Um, just out. Yeah, I'd say that's good. I love it. You just, yeah, a little color. Yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Have you ever seen the, uh, the show Sagwa, the, the Chinese Siamese cat? I don't think I have. Okay, that was a question. I, I remember you, the so. Aristocats. Ooh, Those were yeah, my favorite as a too. kid. No way. All right. Love them. I, I think my passport is um, the one with the... It's the white cat with the pink bow. Your I have passport? like a my like passport photo? case, yes. Oh, oh, the case. And any person <laughs> that sees me thinks I'm, uh, you know, a bit crazy because I'm 25 and I have a passport, colorful case, a super glittery. <laughs> and they're like, uh, what are you doing there, love? <laughs> right. And then uh, we got Eric asking, as an artist, do you have an artwork that you keep going back and redesigning or touching up? Um, and uh, yeah, just I, how you approach that with fine details and that sort of stuff. Do you, you continually go back or you, when you're done, you're done? Yeah, I would say uh, it really depends. The moment I've kind of like published it, I would say I'm done. Um, just because I feel like, okay, the world has seen it now and yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, unless I haven't published it, I think I would keep going back. Especially if it's a portfolio piece, I would definitely want to do that. Yeah, and kind of going off of that, I guess, do you ever look back at some of your older work versus where you are now? Like, what do you think is um, maybe the biggest advancement or change or how have you changed over the course of any of that art or have you? Um, sorry. One more time. <laughs> so like, if do you ever look back at some of your, your older work? Um, okay. and just see, you know, your older work compared to today's work, how has oh. that evolved and changed or has, have you kind of stuck to the same, the same look and everything? Oh no, I would say it's, it's changed a lot. Um, especially seeing as I take a lot of inspiration from other people, uh, I would come across like my artwork and I would say, wow, like, I cannot believe that I did this. What was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, it practice makes perfect and you don't know where you're gonna go until you actually see your further like uh your previous artwork and you kind of compare it to what you have and you're like oh wow like i've, I've done so much so like uh, a lot of my artwork i would say has changed do you have a goal or a hope like maybe within the next like five years you would like to be uh, designing or doing work you know in a specific realm or for a particular um i guess genre um honestly anything cartoonized like working for pixar disney would be really cool uh i obviously really because i graduated in game design so anything within the gaming industry um it definitely has my eyes set on it as well uh i know that companies like ubisoft have that very cartoonized look as well um, within their games so something similar to that would be awesome to work in awesome okay. i'm just gonna kind of hop over um yeah we got about uh maybe another 25 20 to 25 minutes and then we'll kind of do a wrap up and recap awesome. everything yeah so i would say definitely like the biggest thing is always focusing on um, the liner and then of course the coloring with the coloring you just have to focus on the fact that you're going to be doing a lot of shading and highlights that's pretty much what brings the piece to life um so i'm just gonna go ahead and open up the big picture here okay so with this piece um i have a lot of layers so we're gonna ignore that <laughs> But um, for example, I'm just going to talk about like the things I did and what actually helped me. So previously I had uh, this as like a little gray, um, a little gray mirror, I should say. 
Um, I saw that it, it doesn't add much to it as the purple hue did. So the way I honestly just did that was by adding any sort of color. Let's say I put over a, a purple hue and then I go into the blend modes and I, I go, uh, I click onto the screen one. So previously it looked like this, honestly, just any sort of color. And then blend modes are always fun to use because you can just click through and see which one looks best. And I thought that screen uh, kind of fit what I was going for. I liked overlay as well, but I thought they clashed with the keyboard a lot. So I just go to, uh, went with screen and that gives it that lighter look as well. So this is more of like the highlight of the, of the banner itself. And then you kind of have uh, the darker uh, areas in the background. Yeah, you just toggle on and off that that color just in general, and my eyes instantly go there. So what yeah. you're doing is working. Yeah, <laughs> that's the goal. So we're doing a good job so far. <laughs> and, and then, uh, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. No, go for it. Awesome. So um, what I use here is I like to use um, a variety of. Uh, now let's see how. I believe they're called. Let me use the specific names. Okay. So you would go through the adjustment layer and you would click on either color balance. So what I tend to use a lot is color balance, hue saturation, because those are fun, and uh, brightness and contrast. Now these, I tend to do them towards the end just because if there's something that isn't sitting right with you, just changing a little bit of the color balance will help a bunch. Mm -hmm. So in order to create the background, um, it's always great adding other images um, in as well. So for this, I used um, a royalty free asset, which I just uh, brought in earlier. And as you can see, it's just this one here. So what I did was I stretched it out to specifically where I wanted it to be. And in order to do this, it's pretty simple. Sometimes when you, I'm not sure if it's because Photoshop on the iPad is still in beta, but when you select, let's say this image here, it selects the entire thing. So what you can just do to avoid that is you can just use the lasso tool and just kind of go around it. And this time when you select it, it would actually select what you're going for here. Yeah, and if uh, if any of you are looking for those background images, um, be sure to check out Adobe Stock as well. Tons of options there for that sort of thing. So log in, Adobe Stock. Uh, but yeah, always want to make sure your bases are are covered and you're getting something that's um, legal and good to use. Yeah. And uh, Anthony in the chat is asking who or what are your inspirations? And I know we touched on this a little bit, but is there maybe um, like one or two things that you feel you draw from more than others? Um, I would definitely say that with me, I don't have a specific person that I've always uh, kind of gone back to. I like using this application that's called Pinterest and that gives me a variety of like artists and whatever I'm looking for for inspiration. It could be nails, it could be shoes, it can be whatever, but uh, it kind of starts sectoring things off according to what you like. So anytime you open up the application, you just have a bunch of things that I'm like, oh, I like this. Yeah. Um, and I search a lot of different sorts of drawings, whether it's 2D art or 3D art. Um, and it would just, I would, whenever I open up the application, I'll find new things. And that kind of uh, inspires me to either do something similar or kind of take that same aspect of what they've done and replicate it into my own and even add like, let's say my own things. So for this uh, specifically, um, I believe I saw it was a picture that was taken of someone holding a mirror so it was a real photo taken of someone holding the mirror. And that's kind of what inspired me. Oh, I could maybe do that as a cartoon I style. Love that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, from this, you just want to make sure that the, uh, the corners are uh, in proportion. You want to, sorry. And right now we're just kind of taking that image and, and sizing it over the, uh, the screen there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then we're just going to use, so we just want to make sure that it's the same size. And then we're just going to use the perspective tool and distort it a little. 
is not working out as it wants to right now. There we go. Then we just want to match up the lines. And hey, Tiffany, I see you over in the chat. Um, she is asking any advice on how to get started with doing 2D art and possibly learning curves. So um, just kind of getting started. And yeah, I guess uh, maybe it'd be good to know, I think, to touch on that even more, uh, maybe some trouble spots that you had kind of starting out and how you overcame that. Um, I think my biggest thing was the fact that I wanted my artwork to look like a professional piece of artwork in, in an instant and it wasn't working out that way. I was like, why is my art looking like a stick figure and theirs is beautiful? Um, and what I noticed is that we all have our own different art styles. Um, some people may be into the best detailed looking figure ever, but then your art style may be more cartoonized where it's uh, less detailed. You have that, those round edges, as you mentioned earlier, Alex, mm -hmm. and people would be attracted to that. So everyone has their own art style. I'd say the biggest thing you want to do is just practice on your own uh, art style. Find yourself. What is your own uh, way of creating things? And then kind of uh, you can take inspiration from other people and try and maybe replicate what they have or replicate um, your own vision of what you want to kind of create in the, like, what is what, it, what is your end goal with a project, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, love that. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the stick figure stage. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I don't know what to say there. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, people <laughs> ask uh, what your inspirations are, but have you ever flipped the script and kind of thought that, hey, you know, maybe right now, maybe someday in the near future, but you might be someone else's inspiration, which is kind of a cool thought to have. Yeah, that's, that's um, a very you, beautiful thought. You definitely have a great look going here. Um, and I do feel, you know, I said this earlier in the intro, but I, I do feel your work very much reflects your, your high energy and just bubbly, fun, uh, positive attitude. Like I feel that in your work, which is what really <laughs> makes you. it art. So I think that's really cool. And I, I think everyone else here in the chat would agree. I appreciate that a lot. Um, actually, I had a little dip, I would say, when I was um, in high school, but I would explain that in a second. I just want to kind of go over for the fact that, uh, so once you kind of select, uh, sorry, put it in perspective of where you want the the image to be, what I then wanted to do is, because I thought this, this tone just didn't work, I kind of wanted it to be something more pastel um, just to fit the theme. So with this, you can always go into um, the little color properties and layers that we can always create. And for this, all you have to do is go over here and you create an adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer will bring you to a bunch of options that you can select. Now for this case, I use the color balance. So I actually moved, the, uh, moved it towards the CN side and I use more of the green side just to reduce that um reduce the opacity i would say in it and uh the, the dark colors that it brings and if i left this in the middle uh, i don't know what's going on there but that is not for me so <laughs> <laughs> we went for the blue side just so that we can get that nice pastel look and just the it's the same with uh this option here this is hue and saturation and i just wanted to reduce the uh, the hue and saturation to bring it to these nice uh, pastel looking colors um yeah. but the the little dip that I had I said that I mentioned earlier during my my high school year was during high school I decided to take the art um exam and the art exam was eight hours long and we oh. only had one break and we had to create three different uh themes so we had a still life uh, a free hand create whatever you want mm -hmm. and I believe the other one was perspective now everything was great until I finally got to the create whatever I want because I sat there and I'm like I don't know what I want to create you know um all this time I've been kind of creating things that people have been telling me to do so my professor would say you need to do this mm -hmm. and we would just do it but when it came to finding me doing something that I want to do I had no idea so I would say that kind of 
stressed me out a lot to the point that by the end of it, I just said, I'm never going to pick up a pencil again and I'm never drawing again. And for three years, I think I quit drawing. Wow. Um, yeah. And I honestly regretted it because when I finally got back into it and I saw how much I was struggling to even draw a straight line, it made me think, I could have progressed so much within the three years if I hadn't given up. So, wow, my it, sorry. In a way, you kind of needed that to like really discover like how dedicated That's true. you are to it. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely say don't don't give up. <laughs> don't and give up because did you're you say it. that was an eight-hour exam in high school? Yes. Wow, that's intense. Yeah. <laughs> wow, good for you. I mean. It remind. I don't. Side note. I don't know if you've ever seen or heard of the movie Whiplash, and it's about a, a jazz drummer. Um, but it okay. kind of sounds like a, a similar storyline there, <laughs> of just like overcoming that 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 breaking moment of like, wow, this is really stressful. Maybe I shouldn't do this, and then like really rediscovering that it is your passion, which is really cool. So if anyone hasn't seen that movie, go check it out. It's called Whiplash. Sounds like a good movie. I should probably watch that. Yeah, and more inspiration yeah <laughs> so um i found that within my piece um after i've pretty much finished coloring everything in i noticed that it wasn't as dark as i'd want it to be um i just felt like the colors were a little off and that's why i say it's always good to just create what you want color it all in and then at the end you can always that's the great thing with photoshop you can always adjust the things at the end so um in this case i just went use the adjustment layer again. This time I selected curves. Now what this allows you to do is just literally play with the little curves, like these little dots at the bottom. And I don't know if you can see, but it makes a big difference. Just adding a little bit of darkness to it, moving this up a bit, really plays with that hue. And for anyone who doesn't know, the way the curves works is basically that bottom left corner is gonna be your, your darkest, the blacks, and then the top right will be yeah. be the whites. So as you adjust along that curve, like the lower left side, you're kind of adjusting the blacks. The middle is going to be your mid-tones and then the right is going to be the the brights. Absolutely. And you don't even have to have it uh, fully all the way as well. If you feel like just half of that would be good, you can lower the opacity and that works for you. So this was previously and this is after the curves. I feel like it definitely gave it more of a, like a boost in a sense, the more vibrant look to it. Yeah, you're kind of like compositing your your image and bringing the eyes in to make the whole scene feel natural, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Baz says, whiplash, but drawing Hollywood is calling. <laughs> Ooh, I'll have to check that one out. I haven't seen that. Cool. Let's see. So we got about uh, maybe another eight, 10 minutes, and then we'll kind of wrap up. So. How are you feeling on time? What, what should we cover next? I'd say we're, we're pretty good. Um, I just wanted to talk about a little bit about the background um, and the additional things. So this is, for example, the logo, these are the little applications. Um, I haven't really finished the applications. I'd say that's definitely something I would want to work on, but um, just for time's sake, this could be. Uh... Yeah, and we still, we do still have, you know, like I said, we got probably total like another, you know, 10, 12 minutes or so. Awesome. Um, but then we'll kind of recap everything. So, amazing. Bit. Yeah. So, for this, um, so what I tend to do is I create a lot of uh, emotes as well. Um, emotes being like emoticons for, let's say, either the phone or you can use it on uh, Twitch like applications that you would just have. And um, what I found is using dark, let's say we've create our, created our lining and we just want to do uh, little add-ons. Now, for example, over here, we have, this used to be in, in a black lining because we always uh, draw within the black lines. And then we added it, we changed it and we added some white. Now you can always do this to want to see anything let's just make this a clipping mask and with my emotes I do this a lot I just feel like it, it gives it that dimension so let's say uh for example with the with the face I would take the skin tone I would grab the skin tone 
and then we want to change them we want to make it slightly slightly darker not too dark um and just the brush tool and when actually drawing over it let's see that it may not look like much but once go through the entire you get that we got a uh, Mabs two K is asking: Is there a way to add a color gradient to an existing drawing without creating a new shape to fill it? Um, a color gradient, as in just to change the colors? Uh, that would be my guess. <laughs> okay. Um, so it maybe, really depends. Maybe you can on... clarify on that, Mabs, if if you're listening still. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, just so I don't miss, you know, explain something. But um, with like as i explained earlier if you just do control u on a desktop that gives you uh like the hues that i kind of brought up earlier through through my ipad um which you can do that through there we go okay through here so as an adjustment layer and you can do hue and saturation and this will bring up this sort of mm -hmm. icon this will do this for the desktop as well and you can just play around with uh the layer that you're on that's why i say it's best to do multiple layers now the reason why this is changing the entirety of the thing is because it is currently not a clipping mask if i clip and mask it let's say to the lines it would only do that for the line it would only change it for the current lines that are selected um but the great there is no color on the lines it's just uh black and I've always had this question. Would black and white be considered a great, like, what's the word? Is it a color or is it a shade? Let's see. Black would be the absence of color, right? Or, I'm sorry. White would be the absence of color. Right. Um, is so it a shade? Yes. Because I've know. always had this topic and I, I believe a lot of people have argued that it's a shade. And I would say, I mean, I, I understand to a certain point. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, the follow up to that was uh, basically like creating two colors blending together uh, within an existing shape, like only on the mouse, for example. OK, so to, to mix two colors together, exactly, I believe. Exactly, but like say only on the mouse, maybe. So like I, you know, like a gradient map or that okay. would be kind of my guess. So, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's two ways of doing it. Um, I say I like to use the brush tool a lot just because I feel like I have control over it. Um, this, you could uh, make it differently whilst using the desktop. I would say it's easiest to probably use the gradient tool, which that way you can select the different hues of what you want it to be and then just kind of draw a line over. Um, but when using the brush tool, I'd say you have more freedom um yeah, i agree so i'm just gonna probably color over this just to give a example just make a new layer so either what you can do is you can create i would say let's say uh, two colors and have two two color points also seeing much love for the idea on emotes and emojis so oh, thank you. I think that along with a cat banner with 16 cats. <laughs> okay. happen, so. I'm going to keep bringing that up because I love cats. So, so we're going to have to do 16 cats of emotes. Oh, even better. <laughs> even better. Yes. I love that. <laughs> Inspiration. It's happening here. It's happening yeah, it is. On Adobe Live. <laughs> So um, how I would go about is there's two different ways. The the first way is probably grabbing two different colors, um, shading, let's say, both these ends. And then that way you can grab your, uh, your eraser tool. Make sure that it's not on the hard round one because that one is the no-go. Did want to grab edge. something that's soft yeah oh, if it's oh not working right now why is it not pressing down for anyone just kind of tuning in here at the end we have been hanging out with gem 
She's awesome. She's been showing us all these cool <laughs> techniques in Photoshop to create a 2D illustrated uh, social media banner. And boy, does it look cool. So be sure to go back and watch anything you missed on uh, YouTube or on Behance. These will be archived. So you might be, I might be speaking to someone in the future. So if I oh, am, wow. um, yeah, yeah. I know you're in the future because you're on the East Coast. So <laughs> that's true. Um, but anyways, yeah, be sure to subscribe on uh, YouTube and Behance and even over on Instagram at Adobe Live and also be sure to check out Jem's work. Uh, and you. she is on Twitch all the time. So go check that out. She crushes video games and she also <laughs> does more streams like this over there. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, in this case, what I did was uh, I just used the brush tool um, to kind of create Two little blobs let's say of the two colors that i want i know they seem similar colors they pretty much are one's just darker um, <laughs> in this case you can have like a blue or pink let's say and then i used my eraser um and i brought it to the soft round edges and just slowly erase that out now the other way you can do this i'd say the easiest way on desktop is just having your two colors and then just using the blur option um, I believe it's called Gaussian Blur. That mm -hmm. is the best thing ever. Um, and you have it over here on uh, the, the iPad as well. So you would just go over, let's see, get a big blob over here. A big blob, orange, and give me a color, Alex. What are we going for? Uh, I like the mint, but I'm going to go with like a well, actually, let's see. Yeah, go go mint. Maybe yeah? let's see okay. what we got there. Let's see what mixture we get. See how we, we can get. make it work. Yeah, <laughs> it might might not work, but we'll see. So if we do Gaussian blur, oh, that's too much. Okay, you just only want a little bit. As you can see, it's slowly blending together. Mm, yeah. And obviously, the more you go, the more you get. So but you want to just have a slow blend, and then you can even just go ahead and just grab more of that. So just picking that same color. And just going over and slowly adding um, more. Would wanna... So many great tips and techniques here. So we are getting um, to the end of our stream here. Maybe uh, is there real quick? Is there anything else you want to touch on? If not, then I think maybe um, I'd love to have you give us kind of like the quick, maybe like two minute recap of what we've been doing this whole stream. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> We pretty much um, just went over how to create like a 2D illustrated banner um, using the brush tool, I would say was our biggest thing and uh, creating little bits and bobs using uh, shading techniques and highlighting techniques um, with the use of Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, I'll also really say fun. the other thing you added in there is um, we talked about how to add a stock image maybe from oh uh, yes adobe stock or or wherever you get your images from but we did discuss um you know because we didn't color in that background um oh yeah there's some instances where we can save some time there and use other elements and composite it in so that was pretty cool too awesome yeah, yeah. and of course you can always just um change the color hues and things so by doing so your best friend is always the adjustment layer where you get a variety of things that you can adjust from the vibrance to the contrast of uh, of the image. Yeah, and it seems like I can think kind of my big takeaway from this is play with um, you know different types of brushes and opacity levels, and even the Gaussian blur tip there just to get different colors is, yeah. is great. So I love that. Um, anything else that you have that you would like to, uh, to touch on, or do we have any final questions for, for Jem in the chat? Yep. If you have any questions and don't forget to use the blend, uh, modes, those are always amazing. So as you can see, we have this, uh, these colors here and it doesn't look like much, but even just, you know, just a simple little line and it could add to it. Um, as you can see, it's working, it's doing something on the buttons here, which mm -hmm. look really cool. Do you ever um, have a hard, I, I know I have a hard time deciding sometimes between like multiple options. There's so many options as a creative oh, of what all to the do. Time. Like, <laughs> I can sometimes spend, 
you know, minutes or like half an hour just going back and forth on different ones? Do you have a hard time deciding? I do. I'm actually very indecisive, which is not good <laughs> because yeah. after I ask for someone's opinion and they tell me what's right, I always go, are you sure? <laughs> and then try and give a whole explanation of why the other one may be good as well. So I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I'd say my best bet is to just kind of do a poll, ask a bunch of my friends what you think is the best. And if I get a variety on one side, I just go with that. <laughs> I'm like, that's the one. Yep. Yeah. You kind of just have to choose at some point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, that about wraps it up. Thanks everyone for hanging out with myself and Jem. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're so much fun to hang out with. I hope we can have you back to uh, work on some cat emojis <laughs> Hopefully. Um, and talk more about fingernails and that sort of stuff. If any of you missed okay. it, be sure to go back and watch the replays on YouTube and Behance. Uh, be sure to follow us on, on all the platforms, including Instagram at Adobe Live. And then uh, stick around because, you know, I might be taken off and Jem might be taken off, but there is more content coming up next in just a few minutes. We'll be joined. Uh, well, we won't be joined, but <laughs> stay tuned for a new <laughs> episode of Adobe Fonts, which is pretty cool if you haven't seen it. Uh, as many of you may have already seen on social media, Wes Anderson is fire right now, and people are making all kinds of videos inspired by his creative style. So join Ben and special guest Jake Giltsoff to see how that can be done in Adobe Express. Um, Jem, thanks so much for being here. Absolute thank you, Alex. Thanks for everything. Again. Yeah, that was, a, that was really fun. And thank you to everyone that tuned in. Great. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care.